Hey everyone, welcome back to Legal Nightmares R Us with your host, Diana Davison. Now, I've been covering the ongoing trial of Gian Gameshi, a former radio star at the CBC in Canada, and exploring, if not exposing, how a series of false allegations can get manufactured and then mobilized to destroy a target. It is my belief that Gian Gameshi was an incidental target of the main journalist involved, Jesse Brown, and his vendetta against the CBC, who decided not to produce his show Canada Land. Gomeshi was just a vehicle to that end. I'll be talking about the CBC's response to and handling of the Gomeshi scandal soon. Mr. Gomeshi's lawyer, Marie Hennen, gave a rare interview to the CBC's Peter Mansbridge on The National on March 29th to discuss the so-called conversation happening in social media, and, I'd say, sloppy journalism promoting the idea that a new court system should be designed for handling sexual assault allegations. Before I get into comment on the interview with Ms. Hennen or the responses, I want to share my favorite moment from the interview. Watch Marie Hennen's reaction to this question. I don't think anybody is is challenging the presumption of innocence. The issue is, in trials like this, is one of fairness where the stories of the complainants are challenged uh, in an appropriate way that the system allows, and yet the position of the... Notice the double take? It was pretty subtle. Let me play it again. God, I love that woman. Right, that moment is the reaction that all rational, informed people should have when listening to the proposals for a new or hybrid court that removes the presumption of innocence for the accused. Now, Mansbridge stated that the presumption of innocence isn't being challenged. They're just disagreeing with the way the system allows for accusers to be cross-examined or questioned. Of course, if you take away the ability to challenge the credibility of your accusers, you're no longer presuming innocence. Anyone proposing to take away the ability to cross-examine accusers on their credibility, who then states they still believe in the presumption of innocence, should get this reaction. So, what does the so-called journalist who broke this story on Gian Gameshi have to say about the court of public opinion versus the actual court system in terms of justice? Now, this is Jesse Brown on his Canada Land podcast, talking to journalist Anne Kingston, who writes for Maclean's. Certainly, I mean, going back, the velocity of voices gave credibility to them. I mean, this does create interesting moral questions, though, in terms of the disconnect between the court of public opinion and the judiciary, in that, you know, some people could argue and put forward and would, you know, there is a concern of revenge and wrongful accusations being able to flourish if they're not tested. These things aren't mutually exclusive. What, Jesse? These things aren't mutually exclusive. What, revenge and false accusations are not mutually exclusive from people coming forth to journalists and making accusations. If somebody hurts you, you know, it's not like there's just like these pure, like, yes, I'm just trying to change the discourse on sexual assault and I'm just trying to warn other people. I have no, we phrase these things differently. Revenge is one thing. Uh, we talk about justice, you know, well, like, sh- well, sh- sh- shouldn't there be consequences? Double edged sword, yes. You know, like, there should be consequences if you do things like this. So here's a wannabe journalist saying that the motive of revenge is not something to be concerned about when assessing your sources. That uh, somebody who's hurt by somebody else reasonably wants revenge. And the problem is that whether or not they were hurt is the thing he's not investigating, because hashtag I believe, right? So the desire to get revenge on somebody is actually quite concerning in terms of whether or not you need to investigate further the claims that they're making. And if you're the wrong party, you want to see consequences. Are you seeking revenge? I don't know. It's like this is a phrasing thing. You'll notice that it doesn't cross his mind that the wronged party might be the person being accused. And whether or not the person is seeking revenge as they discuss further, is quite important. You know? No, it, well, it's phrasing, but it just opens up a wider discussion. I mean, I think going back to your point, 
I think that mission was therefore accomplished in spades, if that was the only motive in terms of a wider perception of what was going on here. So that was Anne Kingston acknowledging that a person seeking revenge can effectively go to the media and slander somebody and destroy their life. Never has to go to a court that outside of the actual proper judicial system, that if they just use the proposed new system, which is more like social media, that anybody can get revenge on somebody else because they won't be investigated. And the women in the Gomeshi case succeeded at that. But my understanding, I talk to a lot of lawyers who are deal, deal with sexual assault, and they talk about something else, and that is being heard and also being believed, mm-hmm. you know? And they're, they're, those are different kind of thresholds. And I think that things will not change unless we sort of recalibrate in terms of how we listen to these stories being told. Yeah. Yes. Well, incidentally, being believed is the goal of all liars. People don't lie so that they can be called a liar. People lie because the goal is to fool people, to actually be believed. Hashtag I believe is creating a fertile breeding ground for those people who love to get away with lying. And that is the supposed justice system that they think is superior to the Canadian courts. I don't purport to deliver justice. Media is about truth, you know. And, and it should not be about delivering justice. No, and, and you can horrifying. get in a lot of trouble, and that's yeah. not the job. Yes, you could get in a lot of trouble, Jesse, because when you claim to be reporting the truth while also saying that you hashtag believe, what you're telling us is that you have done nothing to actually determine the truth. And the <laughs> you accept that you're not an actual form of justice, you are supporting the proposal that your system replace the actual court system. And I, I take no responsibility for outcomes. You, you know, the job is to just tell the truth. There's a, a process there where both sides are asked for comment that didn't even happen in the courtroom. And that's what kind of moron you're listening to when you listen to Jesse Brown. Of course, Gomeshi was asked to give comment in the courtroom. He chose not to speak, just as he chose not to speak to journalists. The difference was that in the courtroom... The audience was impartial. The judge was impartial. And in social media, the judge had already made up their mind. He wasn't being asked whether or not he committed the crime. He was being asked to explain himself under the presumption of having done it. For Jesse Brown to state that his system was better because he emailed Gomeshi or Gomeshi's lawyers asking for a response, it's just dimwitted at best. At best. I think that having a public forum be where we decide is only useful when the system is failing as disastrously as it has been, as it always has, which in the case of Well, it fills a vacuum. It fills a need, for sure. That's it. This is a recourse for people that I think has worked better so far. And that's not necessarily a huge uh, hurrah for the media as much as it is, I think, an indictment of the legal system. So Jesse and Anne would like us to celebrate that the media allows liars to practice their craft without any actual investigation, which in the court of law is called cross-examination, right? So the problem is that the media allows better for accusers to get away with lying. And that's how he feels his system is better than the courts. Now, let's listen to an actual lawyer, somebody who understands the system, and find out what we really need to be thinking about when we decide whether or not we believe in hashtag justice. Right. Hashtag I believe is not a legal principle, nor should it ever be. Oh, you condescending bitch. Please tell me why you said that. All right, so this opinion is being characterized as condescending. Apparently, hashtag I believe should be a legal principle, according to folks like Jesse Brown and Anne Kingston where people expressed opinions not having heard a word of evidence, that you knew that you could walk into court and that there would be an impartial person that would decide on the evidence that is heard. In the alternate universe of hashtag believers, evidence and impartiality are called victim blaming. They don't think that this is a system of justice. They think that this should be done away with. And let's talk about this victim blaming. Uh, Apparently just asking questions to determine credibility is victim blaming and whacking the witness. In reality, Hennan explains it as such. 
Cases are often determined on credibility. Most evidence is circumstantial. Uh, most evidence does turn on credibility. And that requires a judge to engage in an assessment of it. And so if you can't look at the credibility of a person or the reliability of a person or inconsistency or what their explanations are for saying certain things, then what we should probably do is just not have a system at all. And you can just say what you wish and we'll go straight to conviction. We don't want that. Oh, but they do, Marie. They do want that. They want to be able to just point their finger at somebody and have them convicted without any questions asked, without any actual investigation. We've got journalists claiming to be investigative journalists who think that it's wrong to actually investigate. We cannot have this discussion divorced from wrongful convictions, something that we know occurs not only in this country, but everywhere in the world. And those wrongful convictions occur in sexual assault cases. And in fact, Canada is lagging in the recognition that false accusations are growing. They're growing because it's being made easier and easier for women to go in and accuse people of sexual crimes without any questions asked, and if it turns out they're lying, no punishment. We are lagging behind some other countries, and I will be doing a video on that very soon. So let's finish off with Marie Hennen's thoughts on what to keep in mind when people talk to you about proposed new solutions to trying sexual assault cases. It's just that the conversation should be informed and should be dispassionate and should be meaningful and should be objective. Which is not what you get when you listen to Hashtag Believers or Jesse Brown. When you listen to them, your reaction should be somewhat like this.